Thank you. It's great to be here. Awesome. Are you cold? Uh, this is one of the fireside chats that I actually <laughs> wish we had a fire. Yes. But me too. Okay, listen, um, we're going to dive right in because we've got, uh, we want to keep you guys uh, warm and, uh, and excited and we've got to keep the energy up here. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is just tell us a little bit about Flybits in 30 seconds or less. What do you guys do? Uh, we are a company that allows large enterprises to make the most of their data and turn those data assets into experiences on digital channels. So the data can come from all sorts of systems, but we build tools allowing companies to build things with that data. So we're now, I mean, it's almost two years into the pandemic. How is your company, so you've been around since you were mentioning since 2013? Yeah. How have, can you hear? Speak up, okay, can you hear me now? Okay, awesome. Okay, so I was asking, so Flybits has been around since, uh, it was founded in 2013. How has your business changed during the pandemic and how did you pivot? Uh, it, it, it was, a, I think, everyone in this community. By the way, it's great to be here with you all. It's great to have the tech community here in Toronto, as the mayor mentioned the best and most exciting uh, tech city in the world. And it's good that the first physical meeting that we have is with this community here. So pandemic was as such that we all realized as entrepreneurs that there is no such a thing as a playbook. There was no report out there that we said, oh yeah, let's follow that playbook uh, managing the company as it was in its growth stage during this phase. So trusting our people, uh, really doubling down on our communications efforts, understanding the needs of people. We had young parents, we had single uh, parents, we had um, you know young folks living in small condos. Each of them, they had different needs as we were growing the company and really I incorporating those as factors in our growth cycles were important things that we learned uh, during the, essentially the crisis that we, we went through over the past 18 months. So your perspective on people and your leadership style changed. Can you, can you talk to me about how you changed during this time? So the, the big lessons learned for us was that without great people and without our staff, we couldn't make it through. Uh, this pandemic. I always say that with an A team we can make B products better, but it's not the other way around. So really investing in our people, training them, educating them, really communicating with them, which has its own challenges when everyone is remote as a Zoom tile. Uh, there were lots of lessons learned. So we learned a lot as a team and for me as the CEO was to really understand the needs of our team members uh, while we were growing the company. The expectations of investors didn't change, market dynamics didn't change, uh, capital expenditures did not change, but you know we had to go through a crisis and I think uh, we did it well thanks to my team. How, you know, one of the drum beats during, um, during the last, especially I guess the last uh, month in technology is about the changes in the way that we think about data the way that we think about AI, the way that we think about technology, technology for good. Um, how has that impacted the kind of work that you're doing? Well, the great thing about uh, Canada, especially Toronto, is that we are understanding the power of data. Before the pandemic, if you recall, there was big thing around Canada, AI, we are the next big AI hub in the world. And then when, you, when we talk to CEOs, when we talk to board members, everyone was like, yeah, AI, AI, board members were going to CEO, we need some AI. But then they realized to do what? Mm -hmm. To solve what pain point? Mm -hmm. And then I talked to a lot of AI entrepreneurs that they were all complaining that we have all of these amazing algorithmic capabilities, but no one is giving me the data. Well, of course, right. why should they? So understanding the importance of data, accessing the data, transparency around data, governance around data, so the ecosystem, as Jason mentioned early on, can grow together using data as an asset, is something that Toronto is in a perfect position to lead, and that's why that's what we are focusing on at Flybits, to really allow organizations with permissions of end users to share data with each other, and that sharing will allow new experiences and more personalized experiences to show up on digital channels. And you know, you mentioned to me a little bit earlier around some of the changes specifically in with some of the clients that you're working with in the financial services industry and how that 
kind of new view of AI and data has really shifted that. And you talked about, you know, kind of putting them at the center of kind of a design approach to, um, to thinking about value creation. Talk to me a little bit more about that. So our view at Flybits is that even if you look at, you know, 100 years ago, the way we looked at industries, we verticalized them. So we said, oh, you're in the financial sector, you're in the mining sector, you're in the retail sector. I think the physics of data is as such that a lot of those boundaries are going away. So our view is that you can have a bank in the middle and you can bring a telecom operator, you can bring a supermarket, you can bring an airline, you can bring an energy company, and all of them can share data. But the question is, how? Are you going to centralize that data in a lake that you have no idea how the data is being processed? No. But you can come up with models that the data can be shared effectively based on the permission that the user gives these entities to create new activities and new experiences. And this means you need to really double down on design, not just algorithmic, but also the design user experience explainability, auditability, transparency, all as part of your product team. So you've gone through a massive pivot. Um, give, we've got some early stage founders in the audience today and some people that are running companies. Give them some advice on how to manage change and how to go through a pivot successfully. Uh, I don't think we pivoted in its classical term in a sense that we changed our business models or, or we, we changed our, our views of the market. But I think we pivoted, if, if I want to use that term carefully, on our operating model. So thanks to our team, we came up with models that are more result-oriented and outcome-oriented because we didn't have those input metrics that we had before COVID enhanced. Like, usually you tend to say, oh, the person is at the office, I can see their jacket, I can see their park card, so I can correlate that with them working. You have none of those anymore. Right. So the ability of the leadership to define objectives as a such that you can measure them, and then you can incentivize people, you can recognize people, I think was one of the things that our team did very well, uh, pivoting our operating model so we can run a global company. We are a very proud Canadian company, started in Toronto, but we now have a global workforce from uh, Singapore to, to San Francisco, so mm -hmm. managing more than 100 or so people globally required a pivot in the operating yeah, model well. that we used to have uh, before COVID. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's super interesting. I hear you're hiring. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and the kind of people that would be right for Flybits? The way we hire is that we look at three pillars, uh, character, ability, and skill sets. So that character is very important for us. Someone who is an entrepreneur, and when I, meet, when, when I mention entrepreneurship, it's not someone who wants to start a business, but someone who can think outside the box, can manage uncertainty very well, and can learn and discover with us. That's why we hire a lot from uh, post-secondary institutions, and we take them through programs. Mm -hmm. We are always hiring engineers, we are always hiring product people, but we are also very much looking forward to talk to people who are coming from other disciplines. We would love to hire an interior designer who can really help us with the new ergonomics of our office, which really requires hybrid work. Uh, we are looking for people who are very much interested in productivity and, and HR, but looking at it as a system design, not as classic HR. So, um, and that's what a lot of the capabilities that we can empower in Toronto that is not just about tech and computer science and code, it's really about bringing those complementary disciplines together and turn them into product teams and give them autonomy to build new things. So you have um, a bunch of people that are here. If people want to connect with Flybits today, where should they go? Put their, your hands up, Flybit crew. They're right there, yay, okay, there we go. Yeah. Awesome, well listen, thank you very much for this rapid fire uh, fireside chat. I am gonna now call Leah to join us and uh, she's gonna be making an announcement. Thank you thank so you. much for being yeah, with thanks us. Thanks for having me.